Okay, in this uh, in the second part of the tutorial, I want to look at the use of the UV pass. So this is similar to the motion vector in the sense that the U and the V channels are single channel data passes. Again, we'll see these if we look in the red and the green channels, but again we'll see nothing in the blue or the alpha. So the U value is assigned to the red channel and the V value assigned to the green channel. We can use these for lots of purposes, such as adding, adding lens distortion or even assigning textures and retexturing objects. In this case, we'll retexture this teapot directly from within Nuke. So to do this, I'll start by adding in an ST map, which again, it's not going to give me. An, oh, there it is. Okay, and I'm going to connect the ST map directly to the teapot. And in the UV channels, I need to tell this to read the UV pass for the uh, for, for the for the teapot. Okay, because I need to isolate the um, I'll just flip that back to RGBA. Um, because I need to actually isolate the uh, the teapot from the rest of the uh, aspects of the of the image, um, I'm going to need to uh, uh, access the alpha channel for this uh, for this teapot. At the moment, we can see that the alpha channel is just black blacked out. So this at the moment is just an RGB. So what I need to do is I need to access that. So I'm just going to add in a copy node. Um, I'm going to connect the A pipe directly to the um, to, to the teapot and I'm going to put the B side into the bottom of the ST map. Okay I'm a little bit stuck for space here but uh, I'll just try and organize it a little bit so it's just a little bit tidier and I'm just going to use the copy node to copy in the alpha from the uh, from the RGBA so here's the mat Mat one two three teapot. I just happen to know it's called that, so I'm bringing that in on the from the A side and bringing it in to the to the B side. So hopefully we should see the alpha channel now, or at least we will once we've added in a pre molt. And there we've got the teapot now, the alpha channel of the teapot. So to retexture this, we could add any image. I'm just going to get a, a checkerboard, and um, and this is going to pipe in to the source of the ST map. So hopefully, when we uh, when we look at this away from the alpha channel, now we can see that the that the scene, or particularly the teapot within the scene, has been retextured through this through the ST map uh, using this uh, this. Arbitrary, uh, arb arbitrary texture, and we can now control the way that this um, the, the way that this texture maps onto the teapot by using the UVs that are that are contained within the pass. Uh, we can use a simple grading system to do that, which I'll set up now. So to do this, I'm just gonna I'm just actually gonna intervene in this middle in between the teapot and the ST map. So I'm just gonna disconnect that for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a um, an add node. Okay, and this I'm going to bring in the UV, and I'll set this one just to be using the U. Okay, so I'll connect that in. Might just have to make a little bit more space here to to properly execute this. Okay, so that's going to give me access to the U, uh, or one of the directions of the UVs. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it, and this will be for the Vs. So again, this will need to be connected to the teapot. Again, this is using the UV channel, but this time I'll just access the V side of this. Okay, and then I'll add a merge. It really doesn't matter which order. I'm just reinstating where I was originally. So I'm putting a merge in here. And I need to set the A channel to UV, the B channel to UV, and the output to UV. So what I've essentially done, oops, what I've actually done at this particular point is that I've, I've I've basically reinstated where we were originally. Except now I've got this little bit of a bridge in between where I can access the individual nodes separately. 
So if I connect the SD map back up to the merge node, we should see some something different starting to happen now. Okay, it's a little bit messy, and the reason for that is that I haven't defined this. So my A channel, if we look at my A channel, that's accessing the V. So I need to disable the A. The B channel is accessing uh, the the U only, and then the output is outputting the U's and the V's. So we're back where we were, and we can see now that we've got we've got our texture on, but we can now manipulate this by using these two additives. So if I just start, to, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to use very small values here to to show this, but you can see now that as I start to do that, I'm actually remapping this texture onto the surface of the teapot. The U is allowing me to spin it in that particular axis. If I come to the other one, again I'm need to, going to need to use small values and you can see now how I can map it in the other direction. So this is really powerful and powerful stuff. Remember that this is not a 3D object, this is a 2D flat image. We're accessing this purely and simply from the UV coordinates that were actually mapped onto the teapot dur in, during the render of the 3D. And we're actually accessing that data in order to apply a texture and also to actually control the way that texture maps onto the object. So pretty powerful stuff. And of course if we just want to reinstate this then all we would need to do is we would need to add a merge in here and then mer just merge it back over the original teapot. Obviously we've got that slightly um, odd reflection underneath the teapot but that's for a different tutorial I think. But nevertheless you can see the you can see the principle of what's going on here, the, uh, the, the remapping of a different texture over the original. So uh, I think we'll wrap up at this point. Um, in the third part of the tutorial, we'll take a look at uh, the principle of relighting and uh, in particular we'll take a look at the position point and the normals uh, AOV passes.